What's good YouTube and welcome to now. Did you know after the update that about Naza become very freaking powerful uh, thanks to the new augment uh, divine retribution we're gonna go through that in a second nuking tanking dps and you name it and in this video i will deliver a very powerful build let's hope that it doesn't nerf it uh, let's go and as always we take beginners friendly approach for tunnels that want to learn about nasa and when we get further in the video they don't get confused uh, with the powerful stuff the passive slide 60 percent faster and go 35% uh, further uh, now uh, this one I give it 3 out of 10 I hope one day they rework it first ability you run you create a blaze of fire behind you you or allies standing on top of it will, will cleanse you from any static effects also it will increase uh, your speed and of course enemies affected by it will get uh, heat uh, procs and now for the second ability blazing chakram it works similar to glaive you throw it when it hits enemies gonna proc uh, heat makes those enemy flamed flamed enemies when they die they drop restorative orbs energy and health also it makes those enemy vulnerable to damage more strength you have the more vulnerable they're gonna be also it can be used as a teleport uh, disc so you throw it and you boom again if you hit it again boom at any point you want and it will teleport you to the location you want makes it a very amazing uh, like teleporting or movement uh, ability and also you can throw it normally or charge it uh, as uh, well uh, by holding boom so the difference is uh, the normal will ricochet the charging will not ricochet and the third ability called the uh, warding halo the tanking ability for nasa creates a ring of fire stands and damage nearby enemies uh, gives you damage reduction uh, and makes you invulnerable for three seconds when you cast it and one second when the ring of fire health depletes you can see the health of the ring of fire on the right side after you cast it boom the more enemy will hit you at those three seconds the more health the ring of fire will have boom it's depleted i am invulnerable now the same thing goes on over and over again but you will end up dead all right it's not uh, 100 percent you're gonna be invulnerable forever so you need to get that and now the fourth ability divine spears was a bit useless uh, until uh, the update dante unbound you impale enemies with spears and when you reactivate it uh, you just slam them in the ground uh, let me show you how it works uh, exactly it works as a cc ability yeah there we go boom impale that guy there you go he's impaled and a happy guy of course there is abilities works in synergy when you do the uh, the fire and then you throw the chakram you go to there you have multiple disc on him and so on and so on and so on all right so the update changed everything and now let's start uh, with the real deal and we're gonna start with putting just the augment that released on dante inbound divine retribution by itself on this build so you get how powerful this is all right divine retribution now when speared enemy with the fourth ability impaled suffers from statue effect the statue effect spreads to all speared enemies spear explosions apply 1.5 x status damage and that's affected by ability strength there is couple of tunnels linked me couple of nether build telling me hank what you think about it and they are with 40 strength wait what negative strength bro if you put just blind rage look at this 2.99 damage multiplier when it comes to multiplier you always go for positive strength let me show you uh, what's up uh, all right so the way it works is really really simple so you cast the fourth ability enemies are impaled if i hit one of them just this guy how much i want boom 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 all the others are affected and then the explosion will give it uh, the multiplicative damage from the status effect again you cast this one and then i hit just this guy look at this we just said up just said up boom all the others affected and they're dead as well simple now let's talk about duration for this ability now the thing is having a high duration isn't bad at all not a problem but the problem is you the enemies will be impaled for 18.6 seconds that's not the problem the problem is when you impaling certain enemies let's say this group of enemies you're impaling all right and there is more enemies will spawn and they're not impaled that will create a problem for you staying alive 
as this will be your main CC abilities to CC and to kill and to DPS and to nuke and to do everything the same time. For example, let me show you something really quick. Okay, there you go. This guys. So I am attacking these, right? But there is enemies right here that just spawned like this guy. If these guys stay hanging out like this for a very long time, and especially we're going with a very high range to detonate the whole map, there is enemies will not be affected like this guy and will give you a big trouble. Okay, so what you want, you want those enemies not to be hanging for a very long time. So what we do, we take the prime continuity off and we go, for example, with low duration, let's say transit fortitude, 73 makes it perfect 73 probably around eight seconds they will be impaled eight seconds impaled means i kill the enemies here okay even if they didn't die okay i can recast and catch the other enemies along with my enemies you get the idea so the idea is having not so low duration so low duration you may fail to kill those enemies in time and it's not going to be a very good at nuking Okay, 70% like I just showed you, very perfect. It's like, like, it's like the sweet spot. So you can kill those enemies and catch the new ones and kill everything same time. I hope that answered some of the questions I got in my uh, Discord asking about what duration should you run for Neza. Always I listen to you, Tano. And starting with the first build, no Helmnith. For Thanos that doesn't have the Helmnith system, I thought about you. And veterans who disagree with me about the Helmnith ability that I'm going to be using. You can use any Helmnith you want or not. For new players would ask why we use Helmnith abilities. Helmnith abilities used to boost our shields, to armor strip enemies, to boost our energy, to repellent energy. Everybody have a different reason and so on. It's just to like cover up a gap. That Warframe have a problem with. Alright, starting with the Aura. Brief Respite. When you cast abilities, the energy you use to cast that ability will be converted into shields. The reason we're using Brief Respite because it's synergized with Catalyzing Shields. Catalyzing Shields will lower your shield and gives you 1.33 seconds full shield gate immunity duration. Now, even if I run every single shield mode, I will not reach 1300-1200 for 2.5 seconds shield gate now what is shield gate exactly in warframe in case you're a new player now when your shield is depleted the screen shakes for a second they have like that electric shake that means your shield is depleted and you are invulnerable for amount of seconds all right depends on how many how much shield you have now how we do shield gate and what is it i have 37 shield and 465 health now if an enemy hit me with 1 million i should die right yes no now, in Warframe, if an enemy hits me with 1 million, only my 37 shield will deplete and I'll be immune for 1.33 seconds and then my HP will be gone in the next hit. Now, the way we do this is when an enemy takes off my, th my 37 shield, I cast an ability with Brief Respite, I refill my 37 and I am immune again. So, it's a loop. That's what is shield gating. Your shield depleted, you refill it, you depleted refill it depleted refill it. every time it's depleted you are unvulnerable simple as that now for the exile slot we're running power drift as a strength but i give you a couple of other options you can run cunning drift for more range but you need to put a, a formula here now you don't need to use prime short footed at all this time because our wording halo will keep you a menu and everything but if you're old nether uh like have the uh Vazarin here you can just throw it there or throw whatever you want there it doesn't uh, matter but i highly recommend power drift or the um cunning drift best in slot when it comes uh, to exilus uh, slot now overextend rolling guard is very important as you would say oh wording hello why rolling guard bro you're fighting against eximus units against nullifiers against oculites a lot of tough enemies that can give you a very hard time and put you in a corner where you find yourself you need to use rolling guard stretch divine retribution prime the flow catalyzing shield transfortitude and intensify and arcane energize is very important here as it's a bit hangry this nether about the uh, like costing of energy all right and even with 100 efficiency still he's a bit uh, he's a bit tough when it comes to energy arcane fury you change it depends on the weapon if you're running primary secondary whatever change this arcane depends on what weapon you're using 
Let's see how this build works against level 225 heavy corrupted guns. First ability active, third ability always active, fourth ability to impale those enemies, and I'm just gonna use the Sedo. There you go. Boom, 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 and all of them are dead. Just shooting one target. Now, let's try it with Glaive. You don't have to use Glaive. You can use any weapon you want. It's just Glaive my favorite weapon, all right? That's why I just tested it with Sedo before Glaive. There you go. Every enemy is dead. The reason I love Glaive about this, because slash get proc to all spirit enemies uh, and it's even better than uh, melee influence uh, now let's go for the real deal with the build and the helmet ability that i'm going to be using this build is identical to the no helmet but we're going to be using nourish damage increase 115 percent proking viral on enemies we hit and enemies that hit us works in a way of some cc arcane fury because i'm going to be using glaive and uh, and also it will give you the energy multiplier because naza is a bit uh, energy hungry now i'm going to be running two umber casting speed and i left for you three empty slots you can run viola tarkon shards for melee damage you already have enough energy for the damage boost or you can run the topaz for your secondary depends on the weapon you want to use i leave it you or strength or ability strength whatever you want or two uh, emerald archon shards with corrosive if your weapon have corrosive and you want to armor strip uh, those enemies because if you shoot one target and he armor strip all the other targets will also be armor strip which makes it very very good but i left the slots for you to decide and the glaive build we're going to be using is very tricky because i'm going to be running gleaming talent dreamers wrath the build you already know about it, slash and electricity the reason for a slash on electricity because melee influence melee influence uh, when you proc electricity all the status on that target will be teleported to all the targets uh, around you 20 meters for 18 seconds now the electricity will work as some kind of seeing those enemies viral from nourish will be teleported as well so when we impale those enemies they're viral ready get the point right so let me show you how it is exactly also the melee influence will give some love to all nearby enemies will make you a, a very powerful uh, uni like nuke machine one of the best i ever did 1 million 400 slash how much more do you want look at this boom boom everything is dead my friend and there is nothing will be alive let's go to steel path I'm all about that money Trying to get rich in a hurry My team are all in with me Trying to get it in, trying to get it in Trying to get it in, trying to get it in, in. Black that whip, sitting on the strip Cup full of liquor, I'm taking a sip Stacks in my hand, wrapped in a band Money got me feeling like the man Can't slow down, following the plan We get it in, get it in, get it in No, we can't slow down, but I'm carry on the plan Gotta get it in, get it in, get it in Get it in. 
We come to the end. I highly recommend if you're going for the Void Cascade Level Cup to use two Emerald Darkon Shards and Corrosive Burston. Big love to you guys all and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to sub, like and let me know in the comments below if you find this video helpful. Our Discord link in the description if you want to join our community. Peace and love and there is a lot more coming to the channel. Stay tuned and turn the bell on. Peace and love. <laughs>